Thank you for that. I want to welcome everybody again. I'm Jamal Corner. I'm going to be facilitating tonight's information session. If you require any Spanish translations for this session, please follow the directions provided on the screen. Also want to remind our speakers tonight to speak a little slowly as we'll be translating this simultaneously. Joining us tonight is Gary Hardy Jr. from the Board of Education, our superintendent, Dr. Gudio Crossway, Assistant Superintendent of Education Services, Dr. Shauna Dinkins, Chief Business Official, Gregory Fromm, and Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Dr. Brian Lucas. At this time, I'd like to invite Board Member Hardy to say a few words. Mr. Hardy. Mr. Corner, he might be running a little late. I know he was trying to get here from his job and maybe he can say a few words at, at the end of the meeting. No, no worries. Uh, we'll, <clears throat> we can throw it back to him later. So at this time, uh, I'm gonna direct you just back to the screen for our directions um, on seeing the presentation in Spanish. And I'm going to give you those directions one more time in Spanish, just to make sure you have them for this evening. Bienvenidos a la reunión y gracias por acompañarnos. Un recordatorio que esta sesión se está transmitiendo en inglés y en español. Siga las instrucciones en la pantalla para ver y escuchar la presentación en español. Hacia arriba de su pantalla, haga clic en View Options para ver las opciones de idioma de la presentación. En el fondo de su pantalla, haga clic en Interpretación para ver las opciones de audio. Okay, thank you again for that. And Mr. Corner, I believe Mr. Hardy is, is now logged in. Perfect. So at this time, I'll go ahead and throw it to Mr. Hardy and allow him to say a few words. Mr. Hardy. Thank you, Dr. Crossway and uh, Mr. Corner. Um, I just want to say good evening to you all. Um, we thank you for joining us for this information session. Um, we definitely um, look forward to answering any questions and addressing the concerns you may have about this transition. Um, we, we know that um, what occurred is unacceptable for our community. It is a disruption for our entire community, not just your individual schools, but in each and every way that we uh, approach education in, in this community. And we will do everything we can to aggressively pursue efforts to hold anyone accountable for the construction issues that uh, bring us here tonight. Um, but in the process, of course, we want to make sure that uh, during the transition that we minimize disruption, that we um, understand and address any concerns and individual needs that you all may have. Um, as we shift schools and, and students, uh, we know it have an impact, but we want to make sure that impact is, is minimized. So um, I personally want to thank our district team, our school principals as well, um, for um, being proactive to communicate um, these steps on the, on the process with you all and, um, you know, advise you all that we're here for you to, to listen to you and to understand um, how we can make this move uh, less hectic uh, for you. Again, um, we certainly should not be here today have, having this move. Um, it, it is a disruption for our community. It, uh, it's the service that's done for our school system. Um, but we're going to do everything that we can to hold folks accountable that, that caused this uh, incident and at the same time ensure that learning continues in a way um, that is up to par with the excellent education that we believe in here in, in Linwood Unified School District. And we thank you again for joining us tonight and encourage you all to remain in open communication with us as we um, endeavor to assist you through this process. Thank you so much. Thank you for that, Mr. Hardy. At this time, I'm gonna introduce our superintendent, Dr. Crossway. He's gonna provide an overview of tonight's session. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Corner. And thank you, board member Hardy for joining us tonight. Thank you for your support and unwavering leadership for the Linwood community. So good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining today's informational session. First and foremost, I hope that you, your family and your loved ones are all doing well. I know that there are a lot of questions and we will do our best to answer as many as we can today 
but we will also have multiple opportunities for you to share your concerns and direct questions to us. Today, we'll provide you with a summary of the issues we are facing and our current instructional plans for next year. And at the end of this session, we will have a question and answer period. While we know that this situation is not ideal, we are making these plans with student safety as our focus and plan to make the shift as seamless as possible. As a school district, we cannot compromise on student safety. Now, we'll provide some background on the timeline of events that has led to these realignment plans. <clears throat> plans for the instructional shifts were sparked by the discovery of structural issues at Linwood High School following the unexpected failure of exterior roofing panels, also known as soffits, at Linwood High School. Linwood Unified launched an immediate review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the necessary repairs. Linwood Unified families were also provided high level information that there had been a structural issue that we were looking into. Our school board immediately scheduled an emergency board meeting to address the situation in June. Linwood Unified quickly launched a review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. Additionally, we have worked closely with the California Division of State Architects, also known as DSA, to address these concerns. Once again, once the soffits were identified as concerning, our board quickly acted again to hire a firm and in an overabundance of caution to remove those ceiling soffits. As you can see on this timeline, numerous meetings took place and ultimately, Linwood Unified hired an independent structural engineer to help us assess the safety of the building while also investigating the cause of the collapse. On July 23rd, our school board made an agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of the plaster soffits at Linwood High School and an agreement with Delterra to provide emergency project oversight of these soffits. Then on September 10th, the board approved an emergency resolution to remove all soffits at Linwood High School. Then on October 8th, our school board approved agreements with contractors for the emergency removal of the soffits. The following month on November 8th, our school board held another special meeting and study session. And then on November 12th, our school board approved an agreement with an engineering firm to assess the condition of various overhead items on the Linwood High School campus. For a little more background information on the October 8th board meeting, the Board of Education specifically entered into service agreements with AP Construction and Fast Track Construction. And then on November 12th, our district entered into a structural engineering service agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of the various overhead items at Linwood High School. On December 10th, we entered into another agreement with, this time with TYR Incorporated to provide assessment services in conjunction with the emergency plaster software removal at Linwood High School. And then last month, on Sunday the 24th, our school board held a special meeting to review an update on the Linwood High School facilities and propose instructional shifts for the 21-22 school year. At this meeting, our school board emphasized that the process must be very public and transparent with all decisions putting students and staff safety first. The following day on Monday the 25th, our district informed school principals of these shifts and met with staff at Linwood High School and at LMS or Linwood Middle School. The following day on Tuesday, January 26, we notified families that the structural concerns were serious and that plans were in development to physically move instruction off Linwood High School's campus while the investigation continues and repairs are made. Our district is planning to move all Linwood High School student instruction 
to another campus for the 21-22 school year, which of course impacts middle school as well as elementary school students. Please note the following dates of our information sessions and their respective topics. Each information session will be recorded and made available through our district website in English and in Spanish. Throughout this transition, we will continue providing you with regular updates, sharing new information as it becomes available through a variety of platforms, including our website, these information sessions, social media, as well as our phone blast. We will also be gathering feedback through a digital survey that will be sent to Linwood families this month. So keep an eye out for that survey. And as always, I'd like to personally thank you. Thank you for your steadfast support of Linwood Unified as we continue working together to create the strongest learning environments and strive to ensure the success for all of our students. Again, please note that at the end of today's session, we will respond to questions that you post on the Zoom chat. So please make sure to post your questions throughout the presentation. Do not wait to the end. Continue adding questions on your presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Corner. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Gregory Fromm. He's going to provide us with more detail on the construction issues. Mr. Fromm. Thank you, Jamal. We will now take a look at the affected buildings. The G building, the central multi-story facility where the classrooms are located, has been closed for use since June of 2020. Out of an abundance of caution, the district had the engineering firm assess all buildings on campus. To a lesser extent, there are structural concerns at other LHL buildings. Once the investigation is complete and repairs are identified, a timeline will be set and shared with the community. At this time, we believe that the repairs to the lesser effective facilities could be completed before the 2021-22 school year begins. At this time, we do not have information on the cost of repairs remedies to LHS campus, but the district will share these details once they are known. The district will also aggressively pursue remuneration from anyone deemed responsible for construction flaws, as well as matching funds from available state facility dollars. As you know, the Linwood community has supported bond measures for facility improvements in recent years. In 2012, the community supported Measure K, a $93 million bond measure, which has so far funded over $52 million in repair projects and upgrades. The community also supported Measure N, a $65 million bond project in November of 2016. This measure has funded over $15 million in projects to date. In January 2020, the district issued $25 million in bonds from Measure N for repairs and upgraded projects across the Linwood Unified community. It's important to note that the community's approval of Measure K and N included guidance for how those bond funds were to be used with a focus on specific facilities and repairs needed across the district. Funds from past bonds have been spent or are currently committed to current projects. Here's a list of a few of the completed and pending bond projects at sites throughout the district. Now I'll throw it back to you, Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Fromm. Just a friendly reminder to our speakers tonight to continue to speak slowly for the benefit of our simultaneous translation. Also wanna remind the audience to continue to submit your questions here in the chat so we can answer in our question and answer session at the end. I see one here, so great job, keep them coming. At this time, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Shauna Dinkins. She's gonna be highlighting the district's current plans for realignment. Dr. Mr. Dinkins. Corner, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Corner. We have a comment in the, in the Spanish, uh, on the chat in Spanish. Can we go over again the options so that people know how to see and hear the presentation in Spanish once again? Uh, 
Sure, absolutely. Thank you. We're going to go back to that slide now. Perfect. Um, so we have the instructions here on the screen, and I'm actually going to have those uh, gone over again here in Spanish, if you wouldn't mind, Claudia. Como recordatorio, siga las instrucciones en la pantalla para ver y escuchar la presentación en español. Hacia arriba de su pantalla, haga clic en View Options para ver las opciones de idioma de la presentación. En el fondo de su pantalla, haga clic en Interpretación para ver las opciones de audio. All right, thank you for that. Now we're going to go ahead and introduce Dr. Dinkins. She's going to go over our current plans for realignment. Dr. Dinkins. Thank you everyone for being here with us this evening. Now that we've provided background of the construction issues, we will outline the instructional shifts for next year. Linwood High School students will attend the Linwood Middle School campus, which formerly housed Linwood High School. Current fifth graders will remain at their elementary schools next year for sixth grade. Cesar Chavez and Hostler Middle Schools will have grades seven and eight with most Linwood Middle School students attending Hostler. These adjustments are planned for the 21-22 school year, but may be extended as needed based on the extent of the construction issues at Linwood High School. Here's a map that outlines school boundaries detailing where elementary students will promote for middle school. Throughout this process, our goal is to minimize the disruption to our students, both those who will be shifting campuses and those who are already on those campuses. The shift of sixth graders to elementary schools and the addition of new classrooms will ensure both Hostler and Chavez provide strong learning environments for all students. Linwood Unified is committed to keeping our rigorous program of core academics and electives during this transition time, such as AVID, STEAM, music, and college and career pathways. The district is currently determining the best assignments to serve students at our middle schools. In many cases, we expect our LMS staff to join the Chavez and Hostler seventh and eighth grade teaching and support teams. Principals will be dedicated to ensuring strong student connections and support. Linwood Unified has adopted a social emotional curriculum district-wide to support the needs of our students. We are also working to provide additional social emotional supports during this time of transition including five licensed social workers. Thank you for listening. And now I'll turn it back over to Jamal. Thank you for that, Dr. Dinkins. I wanna thank our audience for listening to our presentation tonight. While many of the details of these plans are still pending, please know that we remain focused on our ultimate goal of doing what's best for our students. We will continue to provide you regular and transparent updates with our community as new information becomes available. We'll do many of those updates on our school websites as well as our district site. At this time, I think we're gonna switch over to our question and answer session. I will answer the questions you submitted here in the chat to the best of our ability. Before we begin, I just wanna remind you that if you have a complex or personal question, you can also email those to meeting questions at mylusd.org for a private or direct response. Also, for those of you who might be watching this session at a later date, we also encourage you to use the meeting questions email. And then lastly, tonight, if we happen to miss your question during the session, please also submit us an email just to ensure that we can get back to you. So I'll go ahead and go to our questions here. The first question, Will transportation be provided for LMS students? Dr. Crossway, did you wanna field that transportation question to begin? 
Sure, thank you, um, Omar and Lourdes for, for that question. We received a lot of questions regarding transportation. And at this time, we are assessing all options, including having conversations with the city to increase transportation. But with that, I do wanna share that you will also see an increased presence of our safety personnel um, around our current location of Linwood Middle School and at Rosa Parks. And if you recall pre-pandemic, our safety staff was not only concerned about, uh, was, was not only stationed at Linwood High School, they would be on Bullis, Imperial, at the Taco Bell on Atlantic and Imperial as well. Um, but the transportation is something that we're going to look at all options because again, we wanna make this as, as easy as possible for families. And we also understand that for some of our families is gonna create some different challenges. So um, we will keep you updated on that. And again, in the survey, please make sure that you give us that information as well, because we're not necessarily getting a lot of people attending these information sessions, but we're really hoping that we'll get more families to respond to the survey. And that's also going to help us better understand the needs and what we can do to provide that additional support. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. We have a two-part question here approximately how many students will be in each classroom? And will there be more classrooms added to the Hostler campus to accommodate the extra students and staff? Mr. Fromm, would you like to field at least the latter part of that question? Sure, Jamal. Um, so there's currently enough space at Hostler to um, bring over the LMS students. Uh, the facility was walked by our facility team along with the school administration there to see what rooms were available. And we don't have to bring any more rooms on or portable classrooms there. There is enough there to meet the need for next year with LMS students on that campus. Thank you for that. And the approximate number of students per classroom. Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Sure, um, our classroom limits have not changed. However, um, in light of COVID-19 restrictions from the Department of Health and CDC, um, we more than likely will return in a hybrid option with 12 to 14 um, students in class at a given time. Thank you for that. Our next question, where will the ninth graders go? Dr. Dinkins, did you wanna? this? Um, current eighth graders will go to their assigned high school. And so all of Linwood High will move to the LMS campus. And then if you're assigned to either Linwood High or Fireball, you will continue on to those schools. Thank you for that. Next question is a popular question we've had in our meeting sessions. Can I transfer my son? To Fireball High School. Uh, we live closer to Fireball than LMS. Do you want to speak to the transfer options, Dr. Dinkins? Yes, uh, we currently have our transfer link available on our website. Um, you can also go to Student Services if you would like to walk in. We are accommodating those requests as space is available, um, but yes, you are, you are more than welcome to put in that transfer request. Thank you for that. Our next question, do we need to sign a paper or is it automatic? And I believe this just speaks to the transferring of students to their new schools. Um, if you are assigned to the high school you want to go, um, go to that rollover, well, that rollover will happen in Aries. It will send students to that assigned school and then the school will reach out to you to fill out um, paperwork for the 21-22 school year. Thank you for that. Our next question, will there be after school programs available for students for those that have both parents working? And that's, I think another popular question is uh, what we're doing in terms of transferring uh, programs from one school uh, to the next. Who would like to cover this question? I'll take that one, Mr. All right, 
<laughs> yeah, so thank you for asking these great questions. Please keep them coming. And before I continue with the response, you're gonna wake up at two o'clock in the morning with some great ideas and, and maybe more questions. So meeting questions at mylusd.org. Call your principal, call the school secretary, give us a call. We have a lot of our principals and directors on this meeting today. So we're all here to help you. And, and the good news is that we're all gonna be here next year. And so our commitment to you, as Mr. Hardy said from the very beginning, it doesn't change. We wanna make sure that your children receive quality education and that they have options. And so that being said, we're, we're doing, we're, it's a physical movement from one location to another for students, but the programs, the staff, we all remain the same. Our commitment remains the same. And we wanna make sure that you're aware of that, that your children continue to be inspired to dream big and to know that they can accomplish anything. We are here to make sure that, again, that they have options. So as a matter of fact, Dr. Dinkins is already working with her team to expand the number of programs and options that we have available for our students. And at tomorrow's board meeting, we're actually having an agenda that we're recommending for our school board to expand the CTE pathways so that more middle school students have those options. So yes, we, we, we remain committed to you. We wanna make sure that your children continue having these options. And again, we're talking about a physical location, right? A change, but please keep in mind that for this summer, we wanna continue having our summer programs for students, just like we did last year. And we wanna expand those programs. I know a lot of school districts were not able to do that last year, but we did. And we're planning to make them even bigger this year. And then for the fall, as Dr. Dinkins said, because we get this question a lot about the number of students in classrooms. We will probably continue to some extent with some virtual learning. And so that means that the number of students that a teacher is servicing will remain about the same. However, if we are able to bring kids safely back to school, it's probably gonna be about 12 to 14 students in a classroom at a time. We're not gonna come back to having 28 or 24 students at the elementary at a time. It'll probably be 12 to 14. The, the other question that we, we've been getting a lot is around vaccines. So right now, vaccines are not available for anyone under 16. Vaccines are available for 16 and over, older. And as you know, it's been a little bit of a challenge to get everyone vaccinated. So it's taking some time. And right now we're hearing that the vaccine for people under 16 be, might be able, might be taking six to nine months. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. C. Uh, here's a good question, one we haven't heard. Uh, once the construction is complete, will the students be automatically transferred back to their home school? So what will the post-construction plan be? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Yes, um, much like we are able to transfer the LMS students to Hostler, we are also aware of both feeder patterns by both address and by feeder school. So um, should it last one year, two years, uh, we, we still don't know. Um, we will definitely work with, with the families on going back. We will keep that information. Thank you. Our next question. I was sent a Google form to fill out. It was a transfer out form. Is that the form we need to enroll sixth graders for middle school? Uh, that is just the beginning. Thank you, Ms. Cabrera, for the question. So the letter you received with the Google link, that was to go to a different school other than your feeder school. So now that you're on that list, as they begin to do a course request for 21-22, then you will receive the enrollment forms at that time. I'm working with the principals and we're looking for that 
to be sent to all families by the end of this month, the first week of March. Thank you for that. We have a couple questions responding to uh, the class size explanation. Want to know if, if the class size also applies to middle school students, the 12 to 14. Yes, it does. Um, in a hybrid model, there's a, a typically, we still have to work and collaborate with our um, associations on this. But typically there's a group A and a group B. So half the students will go to school a certain amount of days. The other half will go the other days. And so that we don't have all the kids there at once. So um, the classes will probably maybe be um, split in half so to speak. Okay. Thank you for that. And I'll give you guys a little bit of time uh, to submit any further questions you have here in the chat. Uh, we'll go ahead and remind you also that you can email us questions at any point, uh, meeting questions at myousd.org. Um, all these sessions have also been filmed. Um, the February 4th and 5th uh, meeting sessions have been posted to our district website, so you can find those there. Uh, the ones for today will be posted uh, shortly after, so if you want to review those, um, you are able to do that. Uh, we have a follow-up question here. Is that because of the relocation COVID? I'm not sure. Exactly what the question um, is. Ms. Cabrera, if you want to, I'm sorry, Dr. Dinkins, did you want to chime? I was just going to say, if, if she's talking about the hybrid model, yes, because, because CDC, um, uh, the state, um, the Center for D Disease Control, the Department of Health, and the county office has recommended that we not have all kids on campus at the same time. So more than likely, it will be some sort of hybrid model, but we still have to collaborate um, to get the exact schedule, but we should have that. I'm optimistic um, before the school year is ended. And, and may I just add to that too is, you know, once we are safely able to return students to in-person support, whether it be hybrid or something different, I know that some families may not feel comfortable yet to send their kids back to school. And so, for that reason, we have created the virtual academy, which provides parents another option. So if you are interested in learning more about the, our virtual academy, again, please call 310-886-1600. I know we have Dr. Quintana, the principal for the virtual academy on the call today. And I'm gonna ask her if she can put her direct phone number on the chat as well. But the Virtual Academy is another option for families um, as we start moving forward to bringing kids back to in-person support. Thank you for that. We have a follow-up question about the transfer window for transferring a child. Will I be able to transfer my son to Fireball at any time or when is the timeline? Dr. Dinkins, did you want to give this question? Uh, sure. Um, right now, we don't have a timeline. I, I would encourage that you do it um, prior to the end of the school year, of course, because we want to accommodate all of the transfers um, based on space available. So I don't want you to rush, but I, I do. It would be nice if we could get it before the end of the year, the school year. Perfect. And I just want to note too that Dr. Quintana from the Virtual Academy has left her number there here in the chat. So if you want to uh, reference that, it is there for you. Our next question, will the district continue to provide intervention services? Dr. Lucas, did you want to deal with this question? Sure, Dr. Dickens can add in any comments in addition, but the, the short answer is absolutely. Uh, we've had some learning difficulties or challenges during the pandemic and realize it's it's been tough uh, for some of our students in our virtual 
environment and the district is committed to uh, finding resources and providing extra interventions as we get back to a, a more normal situation. So the yeah, absolute, absolutely yes. And I will just add, thank you, Dr. Lucas, that we have a partnership with Paper Inc, which provides tutoring services to our students 24 seven. And so it's available in all subjects, even in, in if they're taking a foreign language in school. And we also have um, partnerships. We have 38 partnerships through our health collaborative. And we, um, we work to provide counseling and mental health support to our students. Um, we had to stop in-person interventions because of the surge, but those interventions are also still happening virtually. And you can reach out to your principal for more information on which teachers are servicing students virtually for intervention. Thank you for that. Are you going to provide transfer transportation to the children of Linwood High School? And another question regarding, will there be transporting provided by the district buses? Dr. Crossway, if you wanted to touch on the transportation. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those things that we're looking into. We've received some inquiries about transportation. And again, for us, if, if this is something that's a, a great need, we want to be able to support in the, these efforts. And it may not just be for Linwood High School or the new, uh, the new location at Linwood Middle School. Um, so again, when you get that survey, please take a moment. It'll be a very brief survey, I promise. Uh, but fill it out. It really helps us better understand your needs, your questions, and how we can better support you. And we also are in talks with Linwood City because we anticipate that we may have to adjust some of the routes and, and the time schedules as well. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. Will the middle school students have a block schedule or just one teacher? Dr. Dinkins, did you wanna to speak to this? Um, right now we have a block schedule um, as was collaborated with our teachers unions and associations. Uh, middle school um, traditionally has six teachers. They will continue to have six teachers. The schedule um, will have to be negotiated for next year, and we are currently working on that. And as soon as we have that finality, we will update our families. All right, thank you for that. And I'll give a few moments here to see if we have any additional questions to our chat. Last reminder, you're always welcome to send your questions uh, or comments and suggestions to meeting questions at mylusd.org. We will also have uh, more meetings next week. Um, the initial February 12th date for our relocations meeting has been moved uh, to Tuesday, February 16th. So there will be two of those at nine, one at 9 a.m. and one at 6 p.m. Uh, and those will be focusing on elementary school families. So I think at this time, I'll go ahead and send it back to Dr. Crossway. Who will close I, I, do see, I do see one more question sure. um, regarding the bungalows. Uh -huh. Mr. Fromm, not sure if you can respond to that one. Yeah, Dr. Crossway, um, there's not enough space at Fireball to add the amount of uh, rooms that we would have to put on that, that those school grounds to have all of Linwood high school students go to school there, we'd have to add over 100 portable classrooms and they don't have the space to do that. All right, thank you for that. And Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Corner. And thank you everyone for the great questions for being with us on a Wednesday night. And at this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Hardy if you'd like to make some closing remarks Thank you, Dr. Crosswaite, and thank you all for joining us today. You know, it's really important that we uh, make sure that we share information as it becomes available to you and that we continue to take proactive steps uh, to hear from you. We feel strongly that what occurred is unacceptable to our community, and we will aggressively pursue efforts to hold an anyone responsible for these construction issues that bring us here today. Um, it's our goal to be extremely empathetic to our community 
um, and staff affected by this transition, but we want to make sure that safety is a top priority. So we remain committed to providing safe and engaging learning and work environments for our students, staff, and faculty. Our goal is also to minif minimize uh, disruption during this tra uh, transition. Uh, and after a lot of consideration, um, we feel confident that this is the best option um, and way forward, uh, not only to restore our Linwood High School campus, but to continue the success of students and programs at all um, schools affected. Now, we now um, know that shifting students from their schools can have an, an impact, but we are committed to um, delivering the highest quality instruction, the highest quality facilities and campus engagement with the least possible disruption. Uh, we are confident that our facilities team will have a seamless plan in place to facilitate the move and our school administrators, teachers and staff will collaboratively um, work to make the shift as painless as possible for parents and students because our student safety and learning experience is our number one priority. Uh, we are certainly grateful for the support of the Lima community is your collaboration that has allowed us to reach new heights as a district and together we will meet this challenge as have all others that and continue to, to, to thrive. We pledge to be transparent and keep you updated as we move forward. Um, our district is committed to providing a safe and engaging learning and work environment for our staff, student and faculty and we will continue to honor this commitment in the next uh, coming months. So thank you again. Uh, again, we are uh, certainly understanding that this uh, move is a disruption for you all. As an alumni, uh, it pains me to see our campus um, at Loon High School in the condition that it is, and also think about our students not being able to call that campus home over the next few months. And as a parent, I definitely understand the impact that this shift um, can have on daily lives and routines. And again, we encourage you all to remain in communication with our district staff and school site staff to share any communications that you have around any concerns or questions um, that may arise during this process. And again, we will do everything in our power to hold the folks uh, accountable that caused this um, shift in the first place. Thank you, board member Hardy. So once again, I too wanna just thank you all for joining us tonight. I wanna thank our, our team for preparing this presentation, Mr. Corner for facilitating today's conversation I want to take a moment to thank our translator, Ms. Elizabeth Orozco, because she's been talking almost for an hour. I want to thank all of our district administrators, directors, and all of our school principals for being here tonight as well. And remember that we are all here for you. Yes, these are very difficult challenges and diff very difficult times, but I know that together supporting each other, we too will get through this. I want to um, just also emphasize, if you have any questions, send them to us via this meeting questions at mylusd.org, via your principals, reach out to us, make sure you look out for that survey, complete that, and then also look out for the registration information, which should be coming to you within the next couple of weeks, right, Dr. Dinkins? And so that registration information is gonna give you more options as well. Please continue taking care of yourself, taking care of your neighbors, your loved ones, keep your physical distance from others outside of your household and wear a mask. Thank you very much, everyone. Be safe and have a good night.